The news release that came out Thursday was absolutely revolutionary. According to my summary, Dr. Lee believes that the Aptamer could serve as a potential treatment or preventative measure for all current and possibly future variants of SARS-CoV-2. Did we get this right? You did, Tracy. Our news was absolutely incredible from our perspective. This is something we've been working on for over six months. Um, it was a very um, high-level secretive uh, testing program that we had started with Dr. Lee and, and his team at McMaster, uh, building on the work we had been uh, doing in the Aptimer space. Uh, Aptimers are simply uh, synthetic molecules that have a specific ability to bind to a target profile. And we had initially licensed this technology from Dr. Lee and his team at McMaster in the de development of a disease detection platform that was initially being designed for the SARS-CoV-2 pandemic. As we continued to build out this platform, uh, Dr. Lee and another one of his colleagues at McMaster decided to test this as an actual therapeutic or prophylactic. So against the disease itself, seeing if there might be an ability to utilize aptamers to fight disease. So this testing began in March of this year. And after about a month, we received our initial results and the results were nothing short of spectacular. They were both unexpected and surprising. Dr. Lee and Dr. Miller weren't expecting this to work. And lo and behold, they were um, blown away by the results that we actually received in the testing. These aptamers performed as well as the uh, commercial, best commercially available monoclonal antibody on the market. So that in itself was absolutely uh, staggering from uh, a results perspective. Of course, they also have a good safety profile. Do you want to explain that? Sure thing. And that's one of the things that I think is probably not fully appreciated by uh, the markets right now. Aptimers have been around for at least two decades. They're actually, uh, they have been approved uh, by the FDA for use as a therapeutic. Uh, it's been used in something called Mac as a as a therapeutic for macular degeneration. Um, there was a, a product that made it onto the market back in the 2005 timeframe, if my memory serves. And more recently, there was another product that's uh, been developed called Zymura by a company called Ivec Bio. This company was just sold to a Japanese entity for $6 billion US. And again, that was using aptamer technology to fight macular degeneration. So the safety profile of aptamers is well known. They are simply synthetic DNA or RNA uh, um, uh, nucleic acids, which those are the building blocks of the human body. So they are well tolerated by the human body. Obviously, we'll have to go through the appropriate uh, preclinical and uh, human trials to prove up the safety profile, but we are very, very confident in the uh, ability of aptamers to be utilized to fight disease in humans. Well, just because I have to dumb everything down for myself, can you confirm that my understanding is correct, that the safety profile of this aptamer-based therapeutics could potentially lead to a shorter path of commercial commercialization? Because that's what, of course, shareholders are interested in knowing, the path to commercialization. As we, as we know, Tracy, when you're, when you're working with a new product, the pathway to commercialization always is in a straight line. And the, the, the length of time to get a product to market, there's a lot of unknowns in that pathway. With Aptimers, we are not breaking new ground. This is already a path that has been laid out, that companies have gone through and proven the, the, the efficacious and safety associated with them. 
So we believe that because of that work that's already been done, that we should be able to, you know, at least move through the, the regulatory process at uh, a speed that one would expect to get a new drug to market, if not even quicker, because of the familiarity that the regulatory agencies will have with these nucleic acids. So we're very, very happy about the, uh, so there's, there's always two sides to a drug. Do they work? Are they efficacious? And then probably more importantly, are they safe? And we're very, very confident on the safety profile. Again, as I said, we'll still have to go through the process and we'll have to go through trials to prove it up. But we like our chances uh, uh, on the safety side. And obviously we, we've started to prove up a very uh, compelling story in terms of efficacy. For those of you who may just be going, what, where's this news release? So basically, if I have it right, this news release is kind of opening the opening the door to say that your Aptamer uh, trials that you're doing are showing that it may prove to be a potential preventative and therapeutic treatment for the SARS COVID viral strain. Correct that, me if I got, if I have this wrong. That is absolutely correct. We're looking at it both as a preventative measure or prophylactic and we're you if it, if it works as a prophylactic, by definition, it'll work as a therapeutic. We'll have to go through and test that as well. But we're, um, we're, we're we've already demonstrated that it works as a prophylactic. And again, this is just against SARS. Remember that this is a synthetic molecule, and we can create these molecules or aptamers for almost any target, and that can that can range from SARS COVID two to influenza, to the common cold, to RSV, to tuberculosis, the, and, and we're only dealing in the respiratory pathogen space at this point. Aptomers have the potential to be a systemic uh, treatment as well. So within the body, um, we'll have more news on some additional testing and work we're doing in that regard. But uh, we're really, really happy about this because this truly is a, a potential platform technology. Well, congratulations again on your news. Your phone must be ringing off the hook. Can I ask what you're going to do since putting this news release out? Well, we started probably when we received the first set of results, we did start a planning process. And for something like this, I can't underestimate the amount of work that is involved trying to plan out the various stages of this and how we get to those stages. The wonderful thing about this from our perspective is that we already have a partner in McMaster University. They have the ability to do preclinical trials, phase one, phase two, and even maybe potentially phase three human trials. So we have a built-in partner already that's doing a lot of this work for us. So they're helping us map out the next steps as we move forward. We're starting to engage with government as well. Obviously, this has a significant impact to the delivery of healthcare, not only in Canada, but globally. So there's a lot of focus and attention on this. Um, I was in Ottawa last week talking to the government about this, and uh, there's I think there's going to be a lot of interesting dialogue over the coming uh, weeks about uh, this platform that we're working on. For everyone interested in more information, please go to the Zentech website and or contact their investor relations person below. Thank you, Greg, and congratulations. Thank you, Tracy.